Good morning, St. Mary's. It's good to see you this morning. And I want to welcome you to the first of what I hope will be three weeks of daily prayer. Um, one of the reasons we practice daily prayer as Christians is that faith is often found in our rhythms. Faith is more often found in the day-to-day -day things that we do, just day after day, learning to listen to the voice of God in the Word, in our neighbors, in all the places that God shows up. Rhythms are going to be a key feature of what we're all going to experience over the next couple weeks as we have our rhythms disrupted. And so one of the places the church can be really useful is in helping people just reestablish and rediscover, rediscover rhythms that are really useful um, for the building of faith. Furthermore, we also know that as we're apart, um, that's going to get old after a while. And um, sometimes hearing a voice that just says, hey, we continue to pray, hearing a voice that is familiar, um, and putting this out into a space where we can talk to one another virtually or in real life um, can be comforting and can bring us some sense of hope and purpose at a time when it seems like everything is in upheaval. And so we're very excited to be bringing you these offerings of daily prayer. And they are here for you to use. You can wake up and use them in the morning. You can use them in the evening. Um, if you miss one, just go on to the next one. You know, whatever. They are here for your use. This is simply a tool for us to feel more like a community and for us to work as, as one community, to be a community at prayer, doing the work that we are called to do at this time. The tool that we're going to be using, and you'll get to discover it a little bit, is a book entitled Common Prayer. I have the hardback copy. Um, you are invited to go buy it if you want to join in with this. Um, I'll put a link, I'll put an Amazon link at the bottom of this um, so that you can track it down if you like. It's a daily prayer that was written by a couple of uh, gentlemen who I look up to a lot, Shane Claiborne and Jonathan Wilson Hartgrove. I had the opportunity to study with Jonathan writing for a little while, um, and so I've gotten to know his heart a little bit and what they're after with this. And this is simply a very simple order of prayer that introduces orders of prayer, especially daily prayer, to those who may not be familiar. Um, it also doesn't hurt that I don't have to write something for the next three weeks to simply be able to pick up and use this tool I think is going to be a blessing. If you'd like to buy the book, you can do that. If you don't want to buy the book, um, they have all of this published on a website, commonprayer.net. That's commonprayer.net, and that also will be posted in the notes below. Um, and you can click on that, and every single morning it's going to be brand new. It's going to be exactly what we're praying through. So if uh, you're not a book person, but you still want to pray along, it is on that website, and all you need to do is go there, and it'll be ready for you. I want to give you a couple of uh, instructions as to how we're going to use this tool. Um, and I imagine that we're going to learn how to do this a little bit better day by day. But to begin with, um, first of all, you need to know that some of these are going to be recorded and others of them will be live. Um, on Monday, this one, uh, they're generally going to be recorded simply because uh, Monday morning is an opportunity for me to just kind of recover from Sunday. Um, but occasionally we'll go live and you'll be invited to join in. Um, if we go live, it'll be at 7 o'clock. All the videos will be posted at 7 o'clock, whether live or recorded, um, and you can pick them up then. One of the things you'll notice as we go through is that this will look very much like our normal liturgy. There's light print and bold print, and as you pray along, if you want to pray the bold print, that's great. If you want to pray at all, that's great. If you just want to listen to me pray it, that is great as well. As we go through, there will also be a song every day, and we're going to include that in the show notes as well, uh, in the in the in the notes at, at the bottom on YouTube. And there, we'll just put a clip where you can just simply click on it. And then you can just listen to that song play. Um, if that's a tool you want to use, it'll be there for you. Um, as I said, we're just going to read through. Um, there'll be a couple scripture readings every day. Um, and they, sim they tend to go in order. And so it looks like for the next couple weeks, we're going to be reading from the Exodus and also from the Gospel of Mark. And I think both texts will be really useful for us in the weeks to come. And then finally, we'll come to a point where there's prayer for others. This is going to be a place where I'd love to, I'd love to be able to pray out loud um, and in public for your intentions, the things that are on your heart. And so you're free to send them in, put them in the comments, send me a message, give me a phone call. Um, if you're comfortable having them broadcasted, we're more than happy to pray for them here. And we will pray for them every day by name in this space. Um, the way that we're going to do it for now is that I will open up with some prayer. I will have some basic prayer requests that I'll offer each day. And then we'll invite you to pause and to offer up your own prayer requests in the, in the comfort of your own home. Um, and then we'll conclude, and that should be the end of the video. And so, like I said, we're going to learn this little by little. Um, if there's ways we can make this better, holler at me. But for now, we're going to set out on this journey and discover what daily prayer in a virtual space can look like.
And so if you'd like to join me, uh, go to commonprayer.net, or if you've purchased the book today, we're on page 184. O oh Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Lord, God of hosts, hear our prayer. Listen, O God of Jacob. This morning's psalm is from Psalm 84. Behold our defender, O God, and look upon the face of your anointed. For one day in your courts is better than a thousand in my own room, and to stand at the threshold of the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is both sun and shield. He will give grace and glory. No good thing will the Lord withhold from those who walk with integrity. O Lord of hosts, happy are they who put their trust in you. Lord, God of hosts, hear our prayer. Listen, O God of Jacob. Our first reading for this morning comes from Exodus chapter 2. We'll be reading beginning in verse 23 and reading to chapter 3, verse 15. After a long time, the king of Egypt died. The Israelites groaned under their slavery and cried out. Out of the slavery, their cry for help rose up to God. God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God looked upon the Israelites, and God took notice of them. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you. And this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my title for all generations. This is the word of the Lord. And a second reading for this morning comes from the Gospel according to St. Mark, from the 6th chapter. We'll be reading verses 30 to 46. 
The apostles, ga the apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. And Jesus said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now very late. Send them away so that they may go into the surrounding country and villages and buy something for themselves to eat. But Jesus answered them, You give them something to eat. They said to him, Are we to go and buy two hundred denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? And he said to them, How many loaves have you? Go and see. When they had found out, they said, Five and two fish. Then he ordered them to get all the people to sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and of fifties. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. And he divided the two fish among them all. And all ate and were filled. And they took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces and of the fish. Those who had eaten the loaves numbered five thousand men. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Lord, God of hosts, hear our prayer. Listen, O God of Jacob. Our reflection for the day. 19th century French mystic Therese of Lisieux wrote, My vocation is love. In the heart of the church, who is my mother, I will be love. So I shall be everything, and so my dreams will be fulfilled. To make love loved. It's time for prayers for others. As I said, I will offer a brief prayer, and then we'll invite you to pause and to offer your own prayers. Let us pray. Our Lord and our God, we give you thanks that in the midst of trying times, in the midst of hunger, in the midst of enslavement, in the midst of oppression, in all the ways those things come to us, you speak to us in powerful and profound ways. You send people to help us as you sent Moses. And you make bread in the wilderness as you did through the hands of your son Jesus. In this unique time, we acknowledge, Lord, we feel the burden of our moment, and we feel the need of the world around us. But in the spirit of Moses, in the spirit of Jesus, we ask, O oh God, that you would help us to know you as provider, as Savior, as Lord. And that, God, you would help us to walk in your footsteps, to bring peace and supply and goodness to our neighbors. We pray this day for all of our intentions. We think especially of all those who go back to work today, those who may be nervous about it, those who might be excited about it, and Lord, those who are uncertain about what this day and the days ahead will look like. Lord, we ask that you would send your peace and your goodness to surround those whom we love and ask, O oh God, that you would be with them. And now, my friends, let us pray the way that our Savior has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Loving God, please keep us balanced between the times you call us apart to be alone with you and the times when we dwell in the midst of others who claim you as Lord, that we might in every circumstance know ourselves in the beloved community of your Trinity. Amen. And a benediction for the morning. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you. Wherever he may send you, may he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm, 
May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. My friends, as you go into your day, may you go in peace. The Lord God be with you and be sure of my prayers for you this day. Amen.